Hello friends and welcome, there are going to be spoilers in this video, pause and go watch the EG vs Execration series if you want, but I wanted to talk about an unusual hero in this game, which is Slark. Now he himself is not unusual, but how about as a support? Now that's pretty weird. People love to theorycraft about can you play this hero in a different role, and I do see Slark come up because he kind of has some elements, you know, oh he lanes well, then he has an ult to find vision, and then you have like your shard, right, why can't you do it? Um, now there's elements that you can, and we're going to see that, but we're also going to see reasons why it doesn't quite work out for Execration this game. Now I want to start in the draft because, to their credit, I don't know if they like really were planning to run Slark support, and I haven't watched um, many of their games to be honest, so I don't know if this is actually something they've used in the past and it worked, but draft-wise, I think they just decided to try to flex it. Um, so EG opened up with Broodmother, and so Crystal Maiden Slark was Execration's response, because Slark is a good laner against Broodmother, and he's a fairly popular hero this patch as well, so um, they thought they could open up with that. But EG, over the course of the drafts, kind of counters it with Leshrac and Faceless Void, two heroes who don't really care about Slark's ultimate and can kill him through that. Um, so as they were coming on to their last pick, I think Execration decided to switch things up and go with a Pudge as a carry. So Pudge Crystal Maiden versus Broodmother Rubik. I can't believe that lane again, right? Uh, if you watched that video before, but here it is. This is actually how I found this game in the first place. And I was like, wow, again, but actually Slark's a support way more interesting. So here we are talking about Slark's support instead. Uh, the idea here is that Pudge will be okay against Broodmother in the lane. Kind of depends on the uh, play styles as we talked about in that last video. We're not going to break that down too much here, so go check that out if you want. Um, but SF will be like your real carry, and then Slark, I think they're imagining as a coddle off lane. You know, Slark will be the body in the front versus two melee heroes, so he'll right click a lot. And then with his shard, he's kind of a counter to Faceless Void. His ult does like support stuff. It's also hard to kill him because of his ult as long as he uses it at the right time in Faceless Void ult. Um, when he's getting chased by Broodmother, stuff like that. Uh, but this time he's just a support, so if they waste stuff on him, it's kind of whatever. Let's go ahead and start in the laning stage. This is when Slark is going to be strongest, thanks to his essence shifts, in my opinion. Uh, Granted, I haven't played that much Slark support. Uh, I haven't really ever played it, so I guess I'm learning here as well. But because of Essence Shift, you can do a lot of right-click steal stats, and since they knew it was going to be a double melee matchup, uh, Slark just constantly right-clicks and then blocks camps uh, when the time comes. And every time people come up for last hits, you see he's just hitting them, stealing stats, and it's difficult to trade into this when he's stealing your stats. At level 2, he takes Pounce. And Pounce is a sort of like pseudo initiation because you do leash the enemy, they can move around, but in this case, leashing is enough to lock down Faceless Void, who can't time walk in that time, and they actually pick up a kill. So there are going to be times leash is good enough. However, as a initiator, like a true initiator, Pounce is not as good as other hard stuns because. When you're leashed, you can't use certain mobility uh, spells, but you can still use your items, you can still use other spells, you can still attack. So if you're winning and you pounce someone, that's good because they want to run away because they're, lo they're losing. Um, but if you're a support trying to set things up, Sometimes that pounce is not going to be the best, and we're going to kind of see that later on. Although Essence Shift is strong, keep in mind that you need time to build up stacks. And as a support, you don't get a lot of levels, you don't get a lot of items, so you don't have a lot of attack speed. Early game, that is when it's not the biggest deal because everyone's kind of starting off at low levels, low attack speed, things like that. So when you steal a little bit, it kind of matters a lot. But even here, you kind of see that whereas other supports kind of cast their spells and get tons of value, from Essence Shift, you're like, poke, 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 okay, now it's getting pretty good, poke, 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 right? Like, it takes time, which means you might just be killed, and later on in the game, when you don't have a ton of items as Support Slark, you just aren't going to attack very fast, and not get a ton of value out of Essence Shift. So here in the early game, that's when it's strongest. You kind of see, even against like a hero like Clockwork, it's still a little bit tough. I think that's why he started Wraith Ban, to get the extra armor for when he's a melee hero um, trying to take these right-click trades, but also a little bit of extra attack speed uh, from the agility and the attack speed uh, to make Essence Shift work just that much better. I think he took two levels in it so that um, he can keep some of the stacks just a little bit longer so he doesn't always have to start from scratch. Uh, but again, you know, he... 
as a support, he's just going to struggle to like kind of keep stacks going and then have attack speed. Another issue with Slark support is that you can't really save teammates very well or like do anything for them until you pick up this shard at 15 minutes. And this shard is 75 seconds. Uh, so you don't get to use it all that often. And although it's very powerful, not countered by uh, really anything in terms of right clicks and um, spells that you need to click the target for, if that's not the issue, you don't do anything against that. So heroes like Leshrac or like Clockwork who can target some damage without needing a target, uh, they just like kind of aim in that area, then you're not doing anything for them. So here in the early game when you don't even have the shard anyways, Slark doesn't have TP in this case. Um, yeah, doesn't have TP. Um, and you know, he's not in range in this case, but even if he was, and you started seeing a Slark support TP here, these heroes don't really need to be scared. There's no stun going to be come out, coming out. So even if you pounce the Leshrac, it literally does not stop him at all from doing what he's doing against uh, the SF, unless SF manages to run out and the, the leash range prevents him from chasing. That's like the only thing you can do. In a situation like this, you offer absolutely nothing to protect your Shadow Fiend. Now in this case, you know, he looks pretty dead. But as you can imagine, these kind of situations happen a lot, and as a support, you're supposed to rotate in, and a Rubik rotating in, lift away, you know, telekinesis burst, reduce their damage, clockwork running in, uh, stunning them up, pushing them back, right? CM, slow them, root them, right? Supports typically have a way to contribute that way, whereas Slark will not. In terms of wave clear, Slark is not the worst, so he actually levels up points in Dark Pact, and because of his ultimate, he'll always regen, so you don't have to buy Tranquils on Slark. Um, you can see he's already got his Aghanim Shard queued up. I think he's got boots on the way here. So when he cuts this wave, drags it to the camp, he is just going to use Dark Pact. And this is not, this is not the worst. You know, there are supports with worse wave clear than Slark. So in this sense, you know, he has some farming speed, but Dark Pact only hits around him. So you do have to put yourself in quite a lot of danger. Uh, Coddle, for example, who, you know, maybe more usually a, a support. Actually, that's not true lately, but, um, you know, you can illuminate from very far away. Crystal Maiden, Crystal Nova from very far away. Rubik, you know, Fade Bolt from very far away. So there's wave clear that's actually usable when defending the tower. In this case, he's farming on his own, and that's good enough for what he needs uh, right now. But if he was actually trying to defend a tower, he would struggle to use Dark Pact without just putting himself in a ton of risk. Now, a nice element to Slark is that with your ultimate, you know when the enemy has vision of you. So even without using these sentries, he can feel pretty confident in putting, putting his observer wherever he wants here because he knows the enemy can't see him. Uh, every other support pretty much has to blindly guess. Uh, if the enemy can see them, I'll just put my observer. And if not, I need to waste a couple sentries. So Slark, as a support, could save some money that way. Though I'd also say, you know, core Slark, can also very much do this. And you might not really be looking to ward nearly as much, but you can definitely do this defensively, um, placing your own defensive observer, or um, you know just carry a sentry or two so that when you do see the enemy has vision of you, you just find the D ward and get free gold. It's, yes, it's something cool that support Slark offers, but I, I think if you were to have a Slark as a core on your team, like you kind of have that exact same value. Here they have Slark bait this Broodmother, kind of uses his spell, you know, to farm. Oh no, I'm vulnerable. And then, oh, okay, I pounce and set up. But this is what we're talking about. Broodmother goes, uh-oh, I'm being ganked, you know? And then just starts walking away. So that Pudge has a harder time uh, getting to her. Whereas if you just had a normal stun, Pudge gets there, he gets the hook, he gets the ult. In this case, Brood's actually going to sneak away from the side. So, yeah, I mean, that's just exactly what we're talking about, right? Like sometimes pounce, is not going to be the best. And then here, here we see Depth Shroud come into play. So this is when it's really good and why I think they were thinking about it against Faceless Void because we drop Depth Shroud on the heroes who are chronoed and there's literally nothing Faceless Void can do about that except to grab the Slark as well. So in this very particular situation, Depth Shroud is actually really powerful, and that's why I kind of like the idea of Slark as a support. But let me highlight some weaknesses for you of this. This is three seconds for a 75 second cooldown. So the save is not particularly long, and you only get one uh, 
in quite a while. Like 75 seconds is not bad, but also if this is like your redeeming features to support, having it only every 75 seconds is like very awkward. Compared to Ricky, his shard is 14 seconds. That's very low. Uh, so that's not great. The other issue is that in this case, you chrono people, they can't move, so depth shroud is perfect. But usually, if you're saving someone, they're in a dangerous spot and they want to get out. SF, ignoring the fact that he's chronoed, you can't leave Depth Shroud, otherwise you lose Depth Shroud. So you're actually stuck in the area that Slark is saving you in, and as soon as you leave, you die because you can be targeted again. So you're actually like forced to stay in the same location, and that's sometimes enough, right? That's not bad, but it's also not as good as like Dazzle Grave or Oracle Ult, which saves you and allows you to actually escape. In cases like this, Death Shroud ends, and then you're still in a bad spot uh, being hit, and you didn't actually get out. Um, now, I, again, I don't undersell it, right? Because you can still attack when you're in Death Shroud. It means that if the enemy is standing still as well for whatever reason, not because you have a stun, but maybe you pounced him, I guess, right? Then they can attack, and the enemy cannot. And that's like, that's kind of the cool part about your ultimate and depth shroud, but it has its limitations as a support saving mechanic. So they smoke out on Slark, which, you know, is a benefit of Shadow Dance. You know when you're being spotted, so you never smoke in vision. Woo, right, that's good for you. They kind of go look at this uh, Faces Void. Um, <laughs> gets a little too close though, right? Usually Pudge hooks, hey, let's go initiate, let's go help out. Slark, not gonna provide any stun, silences, things like that. And then your save, Right, you can't even be that close because you need to death shroud. So actually he gets caught here. Unfortunately, these heroes are tanky enough that they live just long enough to get their abilities off. Um, and then, hey, my, my teammate's teaming out, I can save them. So here's, here's like one of the cool parts of depth shroud, right? Like they can't even touch this Pudge because they can't see through this depth shroud. So Pudge is just gone. Um, but he, he unfortunately did not get out in that time. So he is going to be killed. So in this team fight coming up here, Slark comes in to try to help. You do have Pounce as a mobility tool, so if you need to close the gap, you can use it. So that part's kind of cool that you've already got this. It does mean, however, that like, okay, I had to use this spell to get in, so I'm now like stuck in here. And if I'm trying to use it to save someone, that probably means the fight's not going great. So I kind of want Pounce to escape, but if I'm gonna save people, Depth Trout is not that big of a cast range. 800 is like average, I would say, but it does mean you gotta get in close to use it, uh, close enough. And if that involves using Pounce, it means you're probably now in a bit of danger. Here's the other issue we were talking about. Oh, let me save my Shadow Fiend, but he's trying to escape. So between, you know, some four staffs and just running away, he's now out of Depth Shroud. So there goes our 75 second cooldown ability. It helped a little bit in that time, I guess, right? But now it's just kind of awkward. So then what else do we do in this team fight? Because that was it. That was... That was Depth Shroud. That was 75 seconds of my support saving ability. And now I just have core abilities without farm. So, I mean, you kind of see, he just like hugs the fight a little bit. And then, you know, I guess I'll help. I'll come right click, right? But you're a support. So you don't really have much attack speed, which we talked about earlier. So when you're winning the fight, like the enemy dove a little bit here. Now it looks a little better, but as you've kind of been seeing in some of these other examples, they're fairly behind, which makes it a lot harder to do anything on Slark. So it's kind of a hero that only looks good as a support, I imagine, if you're really winning and you get to play more like a core. If you're losing, I think it's gonna be awkward. Oh, and by the way, this same fight, they do end up losing a little longer. And Slark, you know, just really can't offer much because guess what, that one Depth Shroud usage earlier, still on cooldown, so you know, don't really offer anything for the rest of this fight. So jumping ahead, final team fight. There's our SF getting gone on. How do we help him? Depth Shroud, right? And it, it kind of works, but then, you know, we all leave Depth Shroud and for the rest of its duration, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, you know, we kind of try to get out, uh, but uh, from here, well, Depth Shroud's on cooldown. I use my Wraith Pack, that's about it. I'll just try to hit people, but I'm a support. So when I get in too close, I die really easily. Use Shadow Dance. Now what, you know, kind of scared to go in again. So 
I, I don't want this video to seem like I'm literally just flaming. Uh, definitely not flaming Execration or Shanks. I, I actually really love the idea of Slark support and the flexibility to try it. And I do think if it was ever going to work, right, this game makes a lot of sense for how the draft developed and how we got here. But I want to highlight to all of you who sometimes ask, like, oh, why can't I play this hero? I have a slow. Or like, hey, I've got a stun on this hero. Why can't we do it? Hey, here's Slark, right? He has this Death Shroud save ability. He has a strong lane with Essence Shift. He can spawn enemy vision with shadow dance like why can't i play him as a support because sometimes in a very isolated vacuum those things seem strong and they're like support-esque elements but when you take like the grand scheme of a game and you come across more situations like okay well what if we're winning what if we're losing what if i don't need a stun i need like some other kind of ability or what if i have some other ability but i actually need a stun right when you come across like more of these like different situations and scenarios you kind of see why heroes like slark or other heroes you might theory craft on they have some gaps and if you find this like very specific niche of like this is when it's good then yeah maybe it can work and i think this was like pretty close to that but it just still didn't quite pan out um but if you were to just try to pick slark generically in a ton of games i think you'd see it like really struggle um a lot now maybe in your pubs right you have more space to go like normal core items then oh now i have impact but at that point you're just playing core slark so you're not you're not a support i don't want to hear that argument um but yeah, so that's it. I, I hope you guys don't think this is like too flaming, but I, I do want you to see why, like some considerations you should have when you try to think about some of these core heroes as support or vice versa. Why can't you run like Lich mid? It sounds good with nukes, right? Well, like scaling and all that. Uh, so there's always things to consider when uh, you take Dota as a whole, and I hope this uh, shed some light on some of those. Thanks for watching. Bye.